I want to I want to just put in a plug for AMAC. It, it's just they're really on top of things. Uh, I, give my give them a big hand. In, in terms of action, 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 like tell a friend about AMAC and try to be a force multiplier, okay? Because that's really important. And an organization like this, which gets the message out, is is really where it's all about. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna just talk for about ten minutes here, uh, and then Tammy Bruce is coming. So give her a hand in advance. We got really got a great great program. Um, all sorts of good people. What I want to do, um, what I want to do for you now, is um, get into this mode of action, 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 because um, what I do, what I do mostly besides going to prison for standing up for the Constitution, is uh, is write books, right? And um, this book, the new MAGA deal, the uh, unofficial deplorables guide to Donald Trump's 2024 platform. Any deplorables here? Just a few? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I think the best way to, to spend these nine and a half minutes is to tell you a little bit about why I wrote this book. I wrote this book right, I began writing it right after the 2022 congressional elections, which were, as an understatement, a great disappointment to all of us, were they not? We were promised a red wave. It never happened. And so what I wanted to do is figure out why that red wave didn't happen so we would be ready now for the home stretch into November to figure out a way to really take back our country. And so I identified two basic problems with that election. The first thing is you and I both know that when we run on the issues that matter most to the American public, we win. What are those? They're the economy, the border, crime, foreign policy, law and order. That's middle America right there. Where we get beat is when we allow the Obamas, like he did to Romney, or Kamala Harris, like she's trying to do with Trump, when they take us off over here into the social issues, basically abortion, race, LGBTQ, all that stuff, right? And so one of the most important things we have to do is to be able to speak articulately to our friends and associates, the people that we want to convince to vote for Trump about those issues. And this is, this is half of what the new MAGA deal does. It's 37 chapters, 100 actions in 100 days. Half of the chapters roughly are written by former Trump officials. And every chapter, is, it's, like, it's like reading a newspaper article. It's very quick. Right, but if you go in there, you can go in and understand why we have inflation and how we can beat inflation. How Donald Trump secured the border, how Biden Harris opened the border, and how we can secure it again. How Donald Trump was able to get the rocket man to stop testing missiles and bombs, get Putin to stay in Moscow rather than try to go to Kiev. How we were able to bankrupt the Iranian mullahs so that they wouldn't attack Israel. And so the importance of the new MAGA deal book is to arm you with the policy information to explain what we stand for. And that leads me to the second problem we had with the 2022 election. I'm sure every one of you in this room remembers the infamous, well, I call it the Red Wedding speech. It's the Game of Thrones reference that Joe Biden made a month before the election in 2022. The, if you remember that, he stood on, against the background and it was all blood red, 
dark. He looked like Darth Vader. He had like Nazi stormtroopers, like, like, like in military garb behind him. And what did he say? He said that you were extremists. That's what he said. He said that MAGA was a four-letter word. And he got away with it, with far too many people. And they're trying to do that again. How are we the extremists when they want to cut off the genitals of 12-year-old boys? How do we let them get away with it? So what I did in this book is write, write up front in the book uh, a couple of chapters on what MAGA really stands for. First of all, you got to remember, make America great again, right? That expression goes back to who? And Reagan, his convention speech, right? How can MAGA make America great again be an extre extremist position? Well, in their eyes it is. Okay, they're not into that. Um, so what does it stand for? See, this is what I want you to remember when you, when you leave here today and you talk about what MAGA means. It's only three things. And you go back to, and I was there, 2016, when Donald Trump beat 16 Keebler elves, right? People forget he ran against 16 other Republican candidates. 16. Every one of them was a rhino. Every single one. Now, when he got on the stage, he supported tax cuts like the rhinos did. That's good policy. He supported a lower regulatory burden like the rhinos did. That's good policy. That's traditional Republican values. Okay, but ask yourself this. What separated him from them? It was what I call the iron, remember this, please, the iron triangle of MAGA, okay? It's only three things. The top of the triangle. It's a strong manufacturing and industrial base that you achieve through things like buy American, hire American, and fair trade, okay? That's, that's the cornerstone of how Donald Trump won the election, because who did that appeal to most in this country? The battleground states, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Ohio, which at that point was contested, okay? So that, that's the top of the iron mega triangle. What else is it? Secure borders. And you argue that case both on economic and national security grounds. The economic case is you don't let 10 million people in like Kamala Harris has. Oh, you're the border czar, Kamala. Uh, not my job. Uh-uh. Uh, 10 million fo people follow her in. What do they do? They flood our labor markets. And ironically, much to the chagrin of democratic strategists, who are the people who get hurt the most? black, brown, blue-collar Americans who are a core part of the traditional Democrat base. That's how we beat these bastards. That's how we can beat these bastards. So the economic case for border security is that you don't let them steal American jobs and drive down their wages. And then, of course, the national security case, okay? Fentanyl coming across the border. Venezuelan gangs, drug cartels communist Chinese spies setting up God knows what. God and John Solomon knows what, because that's what he does. That's funny, laugh, please. Thank you. Yeah, my brother. Um, the Iron Maga Triangle, what is it? Strong manufacturing base, secure borders. What's the third thing? An end to what? Endless wars. An end to endless wars. I mean, look, my fiance and I came to New York a couple of days early for this because she was at 9-11. And we were talking about this when we were coming out here. It's like that attack was horrific. Thousands of people died. 
property was destroyed. But the real damage that Osama bin Laden did to us was to provoke a stupid overreaction in Bush and Cheney that hurtled us down a path that Obama and Biden would continue us along, fighting endless wars in places where they didn't allow our troops to fight back properly. Okay? And so we sacrificed, we sacrificed the young men and women of the flyover countries, uh, con uh, states. You know what I, what I call the flyover states? America. America. And we spent trillions of dollars of our wealth there. Donald Trump comes along, 2016, he campaigns on what? The Iron Maga Triangle. Fair trade, secure borders, and to endless wars. Rinse and repeat. That's what I want you folks to be able to do. I need you to use this as your secular Bible to go out and proselytize the gospel of MAGA and make sure those bastards don't turn it into a four-letter word. Are you with me? That's all I got. Tammy's next.